one day I was putting things away and I looked at the back and I went, oh my God, there's an envelope thing on here. Hey everybody, it's Monica. Today I'm going to show you how to make an envelope that looks like this using your EK Tools scoring device. This thing. And a few other items. And it's also going to help me get rid of all of this pattern paper that I have 12 by 12 of. So I've already picked out two pieces that are, are going to work great. I'm going to do more than one envelope. But I want to uh, show you how it works a couple of times. So I have already learned that a indistinguishable pattern is best. Like you don't want it to be stripes going one way or even a diagonal going one way because the way it prepares the fold, it it's best to have it an indistinguishable pattern that's really hard to say <laughs> and there's some clouds there and then I'm gonna try this one I'm not sure how it's gonna work but because of what it does it might do something cool but I don't know and I was just gonna say I have bought these um, quite a bit and they're when they're on sale they're five dollars each and they have 48 sheets this one started with and there's some left, but um, this is a great place. Like, that would be cool to use up all this extra. That would be really cool. Look how cute that would be. With those cactus cards from the um, Spellbinders cactus thing. Oh my gosh, I'll have, to, I'll have to make one with those. And just a good way to get rid of all this, this extra stuff. Look at how cute that would be. This was really uh, one of the best paper packs I found the little wildflower one look how cute that stuff is and all this foil in it so this would be the inside print of the envelope and the outside would be white so it just would work perfect let me see if I can just flip through this pack for you because it's so stinking cute okay just a few pages okay there we go banners it came with that would work great for an envelope. Look at all this foil. Oh my God, how pretty. That might work. I don't know if it's gonna work with the circular border thing. And it's fairly thick. I think it's like 65 weight. Maybe not quite that much, but it's perfectly fine for an envelope. Look how cute that would be. And that too. Although because of the diagonals, I'm not sure. But it doesn't hurt to try. I'm probably never gonna use this paper. It's going to go out of fashion before I get back to it. That would be cool. That would be cool for just my background pictures of my cards. Ha <laughs> ha, found something new. Okay. Okay, this thing on the back of it has an envelope maker tool. And it gives you instructions and sizing and uh, grooves for four different sizes of cards. I'm looking for the A2 one. The finished card size we always know for standard card is four and a four and a quarter by five and a half so what you want to do is look for the piece of paper that you're going to need to start with which is here is eight and a half by eight and a half so that will work for an a2 size card and that means that an eight and a half by eleven paper can be used because you can make that eight and a half by eight and a half so then what you do is you cut your paper to eight and a half by eight and a half and then when you come back you line it up on the proper dotted lines that are appropriate for your size cards. So for us, this side would be right here, A2 there, and A2 over here. See those two? And then the same on this side. See the, the A2 there and the A2 there. So let me cut the paper to eight and a half by eight and a half, and I'll, it'll make more sense what I'm doing. And I'll be Two seconds, I gotta use my big cutting board. That's all I was left with when I centered it out. Now we're gonna line our paper up. So you, you put it on the diagonal here, right? And then you look right there, it says A2 and A2 right here. You see that part and that part. So those need to go in there and then it'll match up on the other side if you're right. I'm actually right on pretty close, but 
Let me lay it down and get it perfect. So now you look for the A2 grooves, right? And it's right there. On, and you're going to do horizontal and vertical. So for the top horizontal, we go along that line. And it's right here for the right vertical. And then it just got to look where it tells you to go. So here's the A2 for this left vertical. See, it's not labeled down here. It's only on one side or the other. I'm standing up, walking around my table. Okay, and then this is the A2 for this side. Okay, let me do that. Let me do one of the cardstock ones, and we'll see how this works. Now you see it leaves us with a, um, it's not square, it's a rectangle. To show you how it fits a regular card, here's a regular card base, A2 size card base. Can you see the extra wiggle room it gives you on all four corners there? I mean, you got the folding space too, you got to account for, but that's a lot more wiggle room, but th that's not the envelope. Let's look at a regular sized envelope inside of that. See all the extra wiggle room, even for the envelope? Can you see that? It'll make more sense when I fold, once I fold it. One of these is going to be your top. So you want to round your corners on your top. Okay. And then if you want the pattern and white, or for this case, solid on the outside and pattern on the middle you just fold it up onto itself there I'm gonna sit down I do like the way this worked out I've got all the pattern right on the corners there that's what I was kind of hoping would happen it was worth the measuring <laughs> the headache I could just make a template okay now you have to cut the little corners out So what I found works is if you, as long as you end up with, see the fold remnants, you don't want to see any fold remnants on your piece. So put the fold towards the cut side. Now that one, I left a little bit of a fold evidence. No, we don't want any evidence of that. Am I making sense? You could actually go at a little bit of an angle to make sure. And it, let's see, I left some fold evidence there. Okay, now let me do. Okay. Most of the hard part's done. We just need to decide how far to trim off this little tip that's going to show. So it works like this. You just fold in the sides and fold up the bottom. But we don't. I don't want this part showing. So I just take a straight edge and I find out where that is. And I draw a straight line and I cut it off. It's, it's not rocket science. Beauty mess, just beauty mess. So now we just put double-sided tape along here. I love how this one came out. I had a feeling, because they fold on like a diamond pattern, you know? Because if you do one like these, these cacti, they're gonna end up like that. The pattern's gonna go side to side, oops side to side so if I really had been thinking this through I would have cut this one like you know what I'm trying to say <laughs> nice as that 
see just a little bit it's that fold is showing i'm telling you that's where it's at that's where the secret is if you just don't have any of the little evidence of the fold and see right there too see what i mean by the fold that crease i don't want to see any of that and you don't need to wait till it's finished to to know that and have have it gone Now from the other side, it's going to look perfect. See? Both sides are perfect. Yes. Okay, now we'll do this one. And then you can... See, this is a regular size envelope. Actually, a, a t more than bigger regular sized one. More than bigger, a little bit taller. And that one actually fits in there with a little bit of room at the top. And then a base card, just a regular card without any embellishments. It's going to be, have plenty of wiggle room, right? And then if you've got a card that's got all this stuff on it, like me, I bet I got all this glam going on. I did that. And then I made the paper, the envelope out of this pattern paper. But see how the um, pattern ended up on the diagonal? That's what I was talking about. So, but it's just too stinking cute. And it's sturdy and it protects all that work you've done on your card. So anyway, that's the idea. I hope you enjoyed learning about that. I had this thing for the longest time and didn't even know I had it. 